just kind of is like the the the, the secondary thought they come in and it was like oh shoot this you know isn't what as I'm, clean as I thought it was and you know what I'm curious I I know that you used to work at Way to Grow so I know that, I did so I know I that did. you probably heard this at some point I'm not going to shout out the other brand but mm. there was a point and and I've actually yeah. I've actually been curious to this in the last couple of years, but there was a point where they said that you could recycle your cocoa and that your third and seventh rounds were actually some of your best rounds out of that cocoa. Now, granted, you had to treat it with a... Hey, hey, welcome back to the Jug Dealers Podcast. We are here in the Jug Den. And we, we are in the are Jug Den. here to talk about all things cannabis and lifestyle related. Brought to you by 5.8 Distribution. Yes, powered um, by 5.8. All things quality here. Today's in the episode, we're going to talk about something a little bit different. Lately, we've been diving into nutrients, minerals, elements. Today, we want to talk about a certain substrate that's near and dear to our heart. Yeah. Um, you know, and that's going to be cocoa, cocoa peat. Yeah, cocoa um, peat. I mean, and, and, and really, see, it's funny because when I... I didn't realize the association and such a close association with peat in the horticultural world mm -hmm. to where if you're actually looking that up, looking up cocoa peat is going to get you a, a much broader yeah. variety. We yeah. just have called it cocoa core here in the hydro industry, but 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 core substrate, so cocoa as a substrate, um, which is actually fairly recent, which we're going to get into, you know, some of the history and all that good stuff and kind of delve into this like we normally do. And you can see our preferred brands, the Cytetics brands here, which we will, don't you worry very much, get into that as well. But yeah, that, that the core substrate, uh, which is also known as cocoa peat because of its similarity to peat and because peat's prevalence in the horticultural industry. Um, so what you can see is, and, and one of the things we'll bring up is seeing even just the, the structure of the, of the coconut, mm -hmm. right? And that, that's, that's important because it shows you, you know, where we're getting certain things from, where the different fibers are coming from. And really, pith is more what we're focusing yep. on. And basically, you know, what it is, is it's a fruit of the coconut palm. It's the cocos nucifera. Is that what it is? Nucifera, I believe. Nucifera. Yeah, nucifera. Basically, it's a fruit of the coconut tree. Um, and so, and basically what we do, so we're going to, we're going to start basically with a real quick history about it, and then we'll get into how we process it, and then we're going to talk about basically how we use it after it's been processed. So basically... Grandma, can you get the other uh, the uh, other side up, please? There thank you. you. Yeah, there yeah. you go, thank baby boy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, so basically, uh, I didn't really, you know, as I always say, I always love doing these episodes because I find all kinds of stuff out. We get out. to learn. But we have been using cocoa since the third century and basically they used to use it they would uh they not would, as a substrate though right not as a substrate now, so we're just kind of yeah, doing so they would yeah okay, so cool. they would basically they would break it apart they would use the fibers they would use it in ships and ropes and buildings crude and tools mattresses and stuff probably. like that yeah, yeah, yeah. then you fast forward to the 1800s and they decided hey uh we might be able to use some of this other stuff fast forward even more to 19 what was it 1980 1990 and they were like hey uh People were looking at the insustainability of peat, yeah, because peat takes three hundred years to make, well, and there's it's only peat bogs, yeah, it's and there's, very and there's destructive. Only a, yeah, it's very destructive, yeah. and there's only a couple places in the world you get it: uh, Canada, uh, what Scott is it Scotland, or somewhere in certain, England, certain parts but, but, definitely. I believe you know, it's, in the northern, UK, it's northern, it's parts northern parts. Europe, it's not like that. It's, it doesn't seem to be equatorial. That's for no, sure. definitely not um, equatorial. But it takes a really long time to to, um, to process just naturally, in which people started seeing, hey. We have these coconuts. So really, as of recently in the 1980s, 1990s, people started going in and saying, hey, here's something that we can either uh, augment our peat substrate Correct. with. Which so is they, start, yep. they started adding That's to. That's how it started versus blend. That was how it started. And then eventually they were like, hey, we can actually kind of start uting, utilizing this on its own. Yeah, and so it is derived from the external husk. And, and you know, you can kind of see again, you can see the anatomy of the coconut uh, there. It's environmentally renewable product, which is really what the things is very amazing. And we're going to talk about the sustainability. But it was originally a byproduct of the cocoa fiber yep. industry. Well, and that's what's kind of crazy, right? Because different parts, right, the fiber being the outside more, that was uh, used yep. what's been used historically. It's that inner pith. They were just throwing out the window. It yep. was like, bye-bye. didn't really, you know, didn't really matter so let's i was gonna say let's talk about how they process it and we get to that point because like we were saying for the longest time they were really just processing for rope 
and throwing the rest of it away. So basically what they do uh, honestly surprises me. Much of it's still done by hand as far as the initial processing. So what they do is they they go out in these fields. So India is one of uh, is a, actually central India, which I was also surprised at because I thought a lot, you know, you think about the coast, you think sure. about palm trees. And so I was thinking, oh, this is always done on the coast. Honestly, one of the things that I always thought I had like this misnomer in my mind that it was all done near the coast. And the reason the coconut trees were so salty was because of all the salt water. Sure. Well, that's just shit I made up in my head. Yeah. yeah because yeah, that's yeah. not a real thing. You know, realistically, a lot of this is coming from central India. But what they do is they take these big, long poles and they stick them up in the trees and they, they bring down the coconuts. And when they bring down the coconuts, Coconuts. They take them. They have a big metal spike. Yeah, they just they, plop it on a spike. Plop it off. And for the longest time, um, and actually, this is what I thought was pretty amazing: the best shuckers um, can actually shuck two thousand two thousand coconuts a day. Yeah, which now, I now, thought was. Now, I mean, this is a guy really now, getting after it. Yeah, but also mechanization of the two thousand an hour. Um, <laughs> I, but I think a lot of a lot of so a lot well, of here's that a lot of that initial process from what I was doing the research on a lot of that initial process of getting the husk off it's still done manually now when they, they when, have the, yeah, when yeah, they but. split them and they actually get the coconut milk and they do the inside nut a lot of that is mechanical it, well it, like anything else it's it's the only reason that there there is mechanization they just don't buy it it's yeah, bread it's, right it's, labor's yeah, so money. cheap it's a it's third world same country. thing with <laughs> so if you if you but move, there are machines that are 2000 an hour you just don't see them prevalent because again it's a money thing and they can pay somebody probably a quarter an hour so, to do it by hand and one of the things you see is as Crazy to think. as we move through it um, you know, they basically take, they separate the fiber and the pith. You know, the pith yep. is the part that we're interested in. Yep. Yep. The fiber, a lot of that process is mechanized. They turn it, they take it into, they take it, they make it into rope. Uh, they turn it into pillows and mattresses for China and stuff like that. But the peat, they actually take and they put out on these big pads. Mm hmm and then they spray it down and they turn it again same thing a lot of that turning it's is done it's not really done. the peat it's it, the pith it's the just pith. The cocoa sorry yeah yeah, yeah yeah just to be and, clear and uh, they turn it and they water it and basically and two things we need to understand and remember that are very important is the coconut's maturity because yeah. You know, they needed to be mature when they were harvested but then also how long that process takes because a lot of people can rush that process and there's really no way for the end consumer to tell. To, to know. And, yeah. and, and that's what's really interesting, even with looking into you know our cocoa, the Cytetics cocoa, I realized, oh man, that, that that's a huge part of their whole mantra is the maturity of the coconut and, and the length of the composting, right? Which are both really, really, really important. And that's the and that's basically the aging, you know, yep. that, we talk, that we talk that we talk about with process folks. buffering. Yep. And, yep. 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 And basically what's gonna happen is they're gonna water it. And you know, basically what they're doing is as they water it and saturate it it bakes in the sun and all those salts kind of come to the top and they rinse them out. But again, that, that process, it takes a lot of time. <laughs> well, it does. And let's even really speak, you know, more specific about the buffering process um, itself. Can you actually switch to the other so one? There? I was going to say pith itself is high in sodium and potassium. So that's yeah, yeah. one of the things you're trying to kind of, and, and all the thing is, you treat it before use as a growth medium for plants by soaking in a calcium buffering solution. So that's obviously really important. And that is, you know, again, time, maturity, maturity of coconut, maturity mm -hmm. of time that's been out there. And actually, uh, you know, interestingly enough, and, and I always had this mixed up in my head, right? Because I've always said that that cocoa core in general, and I think some of the actual cheaper brands because of taking less mature coconuts and not taking the time to put on it, does start much more as a high CEC substrate, mm -hmm. which isn't a great thing. It means it's holding a ton of salts. So yes, it's able to switch out over time. If you do buffer it, you can get you know a lot of the nutrients you're looking for to be held within that substrate. But initially, because of that, but that age of the coconut, it's much higher CEC over time, over this processing, and obviously because of buffering, it really comes to a point that uh, it's actually lower CEC, which tends to work better as a as a as a substrate. So as I'm gonna medium. I'm gonna read this straight from the thing because I don't want to mess it up. But the positively charged calcium and magnesium molecules are bound to the negatively charged cocoa molecules. Well, yeah, really, that's whole that's thing. The so big, it, it's so just so people, yeah. and, you know, we want and, and they stay there and, and they don't they don't get switched out. For well, and one thing I want people to understand because you know as we discuss elements and all the rest of these things, we haven't really gotten too much into that capacity. 
that cation capacity right. exchange, in which that's a very critical part of the process. Because well, it's a critical part of any substrate. Just understanding what your CEC is, so it means you know kind of what your potential or your substrate has. Mm -hmm. You know, and if it's super low CEC, it almost becomes like kind of like mainlining. You know what I mean? Which needs to be careful. You're kind of on a razor's edge. If you've got you know an opposite situation where you've got a high CEC, there's a lot more exchange that happens. It yep. takes time. And so, pe like and that. just so people understand, our listeners understand, you have positive and negatively charged ions, and they're constantly working together. Yeah. Yes. And there needs to be a balance. That's the biggest thing. Well, and that's what, you know, that's what an ion is. And really, plant nutrients are absorbed as an inorganic plant available form. So really, even what a salt is, is anything that readily disassociates in water. So we know table salt, mm -hmm. right? That's NaCl. So, but when you put it in water, it separates yeah. into and its that's, individual that's ions. That's what we mean. Is it Na plus yeah, Cl minus, it. right? So, yep. so that's, and I, again, these are basic chemistry. We'll say it many times we are not chemists, but, um, you know, so th some of the basic things to know about there. But most core sold for growing purposes is said to be pre-treated. Once any remaining salts have been leached out of the core, it's a coke, and, and really, we have cocoa chips uh, blend in here, which is nice mm -hmm. too. But same That's thing, they got to be rinsed too. Yep, yep. yep. they, they got to be rinsed as well. Um, at that point is when they're actually suitable for for plant use. You can't just be taking them out and taking it raw and putting it in a in, yep. in a pot. Uh, obviously, again, like we said, sodium potassium levels are going to be way too high and not mm -hmm. be suitable for plant production. Um, cool enough too. Uh, um, I found it interesting that. It's also very high in lignant, making it longer lasting, holding more yep. water, and allows for easier re rewetting. Right? It doesn't have yeah. the shrink effect well, and, and, that we see with peat. Peat's real shrinky. Yeah. Yep. Peat's super shrinky. I, I was going to say, I think I read somewhere it has like eight times its capacity. It can hold its eight times its weight in water. Um, it, it's also kind of hollow too, so it holds. It hold just holds that water. Well, and that's well. again, I've always felt like cocoa. Well, first off, to, just to be clear, it is drained to waste hydro, right? Because mm -hmm. this it's, is a soilless medium. As I say, passive hydro. Yeah, yeah. This is a soil. So, but but get, but don't get it twisted. It's hydro. It's so yeah, you all get, day. You get that beautiful mix of of kind of acting like a soil. Mm -hmm. Right. And, you know, and how you water and things like that. But then also giving you that that really quick acting and readily available, um, um, you know, set of nutrients that it's able to hold in the substrate. So, again, that's why it's become popular in horticulture. That's why it became very immediately popular and currently is still popular here in the cannabis industry. You know, what I mean, it's a, and and it's not that you can't overwater it. It's really you gotta hard. try. It's really you gotta try. I, you know, you I'll be try. honest with you. My one of my first experiences with cocoa, I was working with Ryan Rich. Um, and we did a grow off against each other, mm. same genetics, just peat versus cocoa. Sure. And even the, the thing that I think I found most miraculous was even though the cocoa plants visibly did not look that much larger, it was almost double the weight. I mean, he, sh he shit on me. He just Whoa. shit on me. And, and. I've always found Pete a harder medium and, to work with. Well, personally. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, it's me, definitely I mean, it's not as forgiving. You know, I, I think can you know, overwater it, dude. I came home last night and like my plants, like I got in, I got in at like eleven thirty. My plants were droopy. Target sure. pressure was done, and uh, and I watered them up. You know, again, one of the things I will always encourage people to do is if you do come in on a situation like that, you really want to make sure to water it through because like we were just talking about, when it dries out, the salts are going to rise to the top. So you want to really make sure to water, that, push those salts through. Not only that, the hydraulic conductivity of water is such that like the drier the substrate, the more the water has a tendency to flow mm -hmm. and be more hydrophobic, mm -hmm. hydrophobic and not yeah. hydrophilic, right? So you want that substrate to be accepting mm -hmm. of what you're giving it. So giving it a light watering a little bit like there is all Always a really good idea. So really, almost have to double water, kind of. Yeah, I do. do primer, That's exactly what I do. I, I literally, I'll water Just like a primer. half a gallon through, let it soak through, and then I'll come back and push through yep. a gallon. I'll yeah, watch yeah. it. And I'll watch it a, run, yeah, run, run. Yep, but yep. It, but the 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 miraculous thing is, you come into your room half hour later, and you're like. Wait, which which was the one that was droopy again? Whereas a lot of times with with rock wool and stuff like that, you might not skate out of that situation, it may, well, and, and you may never really truly recover from. Yeah, it. And, and you know, I mean, once you've affected a plant like that, especially I think in rock wool and even really in soil, because soil can be so compact in a lot of scenarios, mm -hmm. and it just it's it's tough for the roots compared to cocoa to really proliferate that 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 whole that whole container. So I mean, in, in a lot of ways, I mean, again, I can see why it's been such a popular uh, 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 substrate and. I use it, you know and, what I mean? And, well, and then, I mean, if we really want to get into it even further, let's talk about sustainability. I was going to say, the sustainability really is an important part of it, and that's really due to increasing concerns regarding the sustainability of peat yep. specifically. Yep. And, and another thing, I'll be honest with you, another thing that we didn't even mention in this that 
um, that honestly, in all the research I did, wasn't mentioned, but I just thought to <laughs> thought of myself right now. Being a cultivator is um, coconut and cocoa is not as susceptible to diseases, pests, and pathogens that you would be in soil because it's not soil. It's not dirt. Right. And it's an above ground product. And it's actually something that comes from above the earth. So it, it is something where you are not as susceptible to well, some I of think the issues that you would if be. you're in, you know, some more conscientious and sustainable processing plants. I know that yep. like something, if it's just thrown in a heap, you know, there there is concern if you're not rinsing it, cleaning it, things like that, mm-hmm. that there is pathogenic fungi that can be associated with it. However, um, again, that seems to be more from when people have come in and that's never been the thought process well, of doing it as a substrate and it just kind of is like the the, the, the secondary thought they come in and it was like, oh, shoot. This you know what I'm, as I thought it was. And you know what I'm curious? I, I know that you used to work at Way to Grow. So I know that. I did. So I know I that did. you probably heard this at some point. I'm not going to shout out the other brand, but mm. there was a point, and and I've yeah. actually I've actually been curious to this in the last couple of years. But there was a point where they said that you could recycle your cocoa, and that your third and seventh rounds were actually some of your best rounds out of that cocoa. Now, granted, you had to treat it with a with a, a hygrozyme, right? You right. know, but I always I believe I always or found well I was. Trying not to. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> they're 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 the homies. Oops. They're the homies. So we love chatting those guys. Yeah, shout um, out, shout but out to the boys. it was something that I always found pretty miraculous was the fact that they said, "Hey, you know, grind this stuff up, get the roots out, treat it with a zyme, and reuse it." Totally, I mean, you're not doing that with peat. No, you're not. And and uh, no, you're not. Definitely not. And and honestly, I think that's probably one of the things that helped that, especially in the horticultural industry, knowing that it was for the most part free of bacteria and most fungal spores. Yep, yep. it was really viable very very quickly 100%. in that industry. And again because of the damage caused by peat mining, right? And originally they would mix it with sand, they would mix it with compost, fertilizer, all kinds of things. And I think that's one of the other reasons why it was originally called cocoa peat is because it came into a blended scenario, which yep. when it yep. became into to cannabis and hydro, it seemed to all be be pure. And again, going back to that company and what, you know, the original ones that we were introduced to, it was always uh, pure. And also, and, and, and last but not least, and I actually love talking about this because this ties in with one of our shout outs later um but as a substrate for growing mushrooms as well which it's it's a banger and why why though because of the fact that they thrive on cellulose because remember folks fungi is not photoperiodic fungi is not a plant right in fact it's more animal yep. than plant it's a spooky one i mean is i love it, it. are there five thousand different types of oh god i don't even know 10, i don't even know i mean i don't mushrooms? even know and, and honestly we'd love to if somebody has an answer to this about you know how many identified species of fungus, fungus out there yeah. currently i would be curious to know that and in fact in fact if somebody can give us an accurate number to that and grandma's gonna take care of it, somebody gives an accurate number to that we will give away a 250 mil silicium and even throw in a couple packs of Clonex with that. Oh, so, yeah. early giveaway, early giveaway. Hell yeah. You know, normally the giveaways come at the end of the show. Normally the giveaways come at the end of the show. But I wanted to give somebody a little bit early. Sing. <laughs> so, again, um, that's really Coco in general as far as a little bit of history, a little bit of what it's for, a little bit about how it came in as a substrate, a little bit about processing, buffering, things like that. But really, let's talk about the Jug Dealers Let's talk about our Coco. Brand. Let's talk about know. our brand. Okay. So the biggest point is, and the biggest point is, is that they only use fully mature piss that meet the highest quality standards. That's what's most important. And we'll get an image up of uh, of the bag itself. In fact, could you move that up a little bit, Grambo? Um, and it's obviously you can see it uh, here, maybe in some of the shots, whatnot. But we've got it out here. It's something we've got fully stocked in Denver currently. It's not something we have available around yeah. the country a whole, whole lot yet. But don't you worry. We're working on that every day. Um, so not only are we jug dealing, we're bag dealing. And then um, we actually have, not only do we have our pure pith, which I've been using at home, I love it. I'm going to tell you right now, you can water the living daylights. Like, it, it makes your plants drink. Yeah, and and, and and it actually, it seems to, you know, some sometimes, depending on the blend, it, it actually will hold almost a little bit too much water. This has a really beautiful uh, full aspect of being able to dry out pretty damn yeah, quick. Yeah, it dries so out really quick. Keep, I mean, you got to keep I mean, watering it. For any, you know, for anybody, because I know 
the brands we used to use, sure. they were definitely a little bit more moisture heavy. I can tell you that just because we couldn't ship as many containers across the world because they were so wet. But this stuff, I'll be honest with you, for anybody who likes something with a quick dry down, something that dries down yep. really fast, this yep. stuff is money. I mean... You, uh, you we can, will have even, rip and ready bags actually coming in. I, you know, now yeah, I that I think that. about that, I heard that. So, and those are coming in. Are I believe having, those are, are those one, one th or one and a half gallons, something like that. I think it? it's a one and a half, but then I think we're are we doing a dehydrated block as well? No, uh, no? no, I think it's no, all just, fluffed, just gonna, pre fluffed. Okay, and so it's actually got it has an interior to it that actually keeps it from crushing. It's this crush proof thing, uh, but it's the same same bag that's in the cocoa, it's just in there, it's pre fluffed. Nice, but again, rip and ready and the, um, ready to go. And the 70 30 because we have and the 70 30, yeah, with, so, which actually has. Chip chips and so cocoa pit. chips yeah and so it's it's, so it's actually not part a of the pearl, it's not a perlite blend you know one of the things so most people so let me just explain this on you know my level in the fact that most people put perlite in their cocoa because they came from the world of peat right where you were you to. where you were trying where you wanted that dry down. If you're using a quality cocoa like this, you're getting all the dry down that you want out of the cocoa. So our 7030 yeah. doesn't have any any perlite in it. It's purely just chunks and pith. But I can tell you from experience on using both of them. Now, if you want something that dries down quickly, this is it. Well, and the other part I like to make about the the, the cocoa chips is that perlite is it's it's has one purpose, one singular purpose, mm -hmm. and that's aeration. And actually, and this is something I didn't know originally, it has no benefits to, to bacteria. It doesn't nope. house anything. There's no, there's, it's not adding to the bioflora that's in there whatsoever. The cocoa chips will, right? And it's that, not sustainable. That's actually habitat. It's, it's not great it's for not them to be pulling either. out of the planet. I can great tell point. you, I can tell you great just point. from, from being a Mason, you know, um, we used to use perlite to insulate our block on chimneys and stuff like that. Just to like put that. a little more air in there, huh? No, 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 no. It, it adds it, insulation. It, it, it adds insulation. Yeah, because of the aeration but, in there, I'm sure. But it what? Well, it, what? You couldn't leave the cells empty, but you always uh, ended up having to wear a mask yeah, because yeah. that fine, fine dust. Mm. And while we're not thinking about it, first off. I know my guys, when they would mix it, they would actually wear masks. But while we're not thinking about it, if you think about the people that are mining that stuff, uh, it's definitely it's, killing, it, it's it definitely is, not good for their lungs. It's not so good for their So it's just, you know, you know, one thing that I've definitely tried to focus on is if I can add to any sustainability from what we do, because we do have a relatively large footprint, sure. I do feel like cocoa is probably one of the best products you can use when it comes to that. And again, without perlite, just going to be better. Well, and, and but also let's take that one step further. And it really is about choosing nothing but the best materials mm -hmm. and and what as far as dietetics what they focus on is really uh, uh you know a couple of things and sourcing first and foremost right sourcing is incredibly important so it's all from inland india right and again you know not having it coastal i've always been educated that having it interior things like that i always thought it was a salt thing there's many factors in that yep. there's a lot of compositions you know you're more cl you're closer to mangrove forests and things like that there's a lot of considerations which i would even say from a sustainability aspect i would want it off of the coast because that can't be good mm -hmm. for what's going on with with the you know the ecology on a coast like that right Very much so um, but also and very, very, very importantly, it's growing the coconuts to full maturity, and it's composting the pith to full maturity. Which is just giving it that time. G time, 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 time. And turning it, and turning it, yep. and turning it. It's funny, because when, when you watch the videos on how they do it, they have these big sprinklers that kind of sit there like you know, mm -hmm. eight feet off the ground, and they're just constantly wetting it, and then either people or machines are going through and just turning it, yep. turning it, yep. turning it. And that's... And that process, again, it just takes time. There's no rushing it. It just takes time in which I can tell you over the years that I've grown, I've been using cocoa for probably seven, eight years now, and I can tell you I've gotten bad batches. And when you, yeah, get, yeah. And when you get a bad batch, it is a nightmare. It well, there's really no, what, what, as far as I'm concerned, there's really no rectifying it in the moment. No, no, they're throwing they're, it away. Know, they're throwing it away. They're throwing, throwing, throwing your garden away. away. 
you know, and, and no one wants to throw a garden away. And that really, that's where the crux of the issue would start is the fact that you have these companies that can rush it, that don't, you know, they're, they're really, as far as quality checks, when stuff comes into the country, the biggest quality check you see on cocoa is they test it for heavy metals. Yeah. That's it. That's That's pretty much you it. Know? And even, honestly, even an RHP certification is really just saying that it's going to be consistent coming out of your facility, not necessarily, there's not a specific standard to it, if you will, mm -hmm. right? It's just saying whatever you're claiming it is, well, because is, what, is what you're going to be putting out. 90% of people you know, look at it, they're like, oh, it's dirt. Well, of dirt. Yeah, yeah. So they're well, like, what? What's quality? You know? As we say many times, not all uh, all nutrients are created equal. Not all substrates are created. Equal, yeah. Not all cocoa is created yeah, that equal. Is very so true. this this synthetic stuff right here. I mean, this is this is honestly it's something we can hang our hat on. And nothing we do here in the Jug Den or at Five Eight is you know do we stray away from the quality. Um, and really, let's get into a little bit more about what synthetics is specifically. Could you move that up a little bit, Grambo? I, you know, I just wanted to kind of talk a little bit about um, other way actually. I don't know why there's no more in there. Okay. <laughs> no problem. So the, the reality is, is they are, they are really trying to achieve superior quality uh, by aging the coconut and also implementing those really rigorous uh, practices. That you, like you were mentioning, obviously mm -hmm. not just the buff, uh, buffering, but, you know, different uh, uh, um, um, composting techniques, flipping it over, all that kind of stuff. I mean, it's obviously, you know, mechanization is a, an important part, but it does come in the third world countries a lot. So you've got a lot of hands-on well, aspect. And, of this and again, the not just that part, quality of the buffers, you know, the yeah. quality of the buffer you're putting in there, making sure you have a buffer that doesn't rinse out quite so easy. Um, you know, but that's, that's basically, I mean, and well, that's something that uh, is interesting because over on our side, uh, dealing with uh, stuff over in like the, the real growers camp, we started doing cocoa tests. Mm -hmm. And we sure. started, so we'd buy like these cheap bricks, these garbage bricks you get off the internet. And we started realizing it's robbing magnesium. It's robbing magnesium. Mm -hmm. We're having to put Epsom salts in Epsom salts. We're realizing, well, there's where all that cow mag has been coming from. That's why everyone's dumping cow mag on it. You're using non properly yeah. buffered cocoa. Yeah. Yeah. There's really only two brands on the market that are properly buffered, and one of them. Well, and right, the, right. well, and the thing is, uh, you know, just like a lot of our products, uh, you know, there's this whole world out there where 90% of the world gets all their stuff from the same supplier, and then they all rebrand it. As right, 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 right. Like, yeah, a lot of white you know, labeling kind of A lot thing. of nutrients, a lot of cocoa, a lot of, I mean, you see some of these bigger companies have gone out and bought up a lot of the companies that a lot of people liked and either they cheapen the way they made that process or they just shut those businesses down. Right. Right. You know, right, right. And this is something where honestly, um, the people that we work with went out and found these guys sure. and went and said, Hey, how can we continue to operate well, outside on, that yeah. umbrella yeah, and, they actually went and bring on, quality products? Went on site and checked it all out and really verified everything. Yeah, they did. That was amazing to see that. Yeah. I mean, we're actually, I think we may, I know, uh, the, I think these guys sent some photos, so we may yeah, actually have some photos, photos will be, will be from those guys' trip to India, going to the coconut farm and seeing how it's done. In which, that's how we do everything. You know, sure, Bo, sure. Bo was actually just over in Holland. Same thing, at the factory, looking at how our the fixtures we deal sure. with are made. So I mean, um, and that's something that we as jug dealers have always prided ourselves right. on is like, if you're going to be a good jug dealer, you got to know the source, sure. you know? And so that's why we've been bringing you kind of these series and talking to you um, about these things, because regardless of whether it's a person like some of the people we interview or the products we bring, we're all about talking right, about right. where a lot of this came from because ultimately that's what's most important. Again, so again, like, you know, like we were saying, Gabe, right? Sourcing is a huge part of it. And I wanted to kind of read, you know, I guess this would be somewhat considered like a mission statement or whatever, you know, with uh, with with Cytetics and kind of what they stand behind and everything else. So I kind of want to just read this, you know, word for word with you guys. And the fact of the matter is they achieved a sup uh, superior quality by aging the coconut, as we mentioned, for extended periods periods in implementing rigorous quality control during processing. Their mature core buffered naturally, making it more environmentally friendly than core altered using chemicals and fertilizers. And what the reason the ways that it's actually um, buffered naturally is that time, yep. that, 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 that lowering of the that EC, composting. that composting, the rinsing, all that kind of stuff, right? Um, with their high uniformity, sterile properties, superior test results, faster saturation, easier expansion, excellent water holding capacity, Scientetics Cocoa Core is the ideal choice 
for any professional grower. Their pith is made from 100% fully mature and aged cocoa core, which is naturally buffered, sterilized, and processed for optimal water retention and excellent drainage. This premium blend is an ideal substrate choice for all plants, promoting healthy root growth and overall plant development. And I don't want to, I would be remiss if we didn't mention the chips as well. And they seem to really be proud of that too. And that is different technology that, you know, as far as the way that they're using it, I haven't seen it used like that before. I've seen bark, I've seen chips. You'll see like, you know, uh, cocoa fiber, used for like a substrate for like orchids and things like that since they're an epiphyte they don't really need you know to be they're, they're not feeding off a of substrate so that's literally they're just using that for structure uh, you know other than that i haven't seen it around much i don't know about you well i mean I'll, so I, I have seen a little bit of it and i'll be honest with you when this first came in um i was skeptical because of some of the other brands i've sure. seen well and that's kind of why, and you know. the lack of quality but and uh, you know i can speak to this having used so much cocoa so there's another brand out there that does it, and if you'll notice, there's a lot more fiber in there mm -hmm. in the chip. Mm -hmm. So when you look at the chip, there's like more fibers sticking out of it. surface area yeah, and all kinds and of good so, stuff. It's not all these clean in which, cuts. In which, you know, when you really get into this and break it down, it's not that like, you, you know, someone would say, oh, you're th this 70 30 chip versus this 70 30 right. looking at them from a distance sure like, you would think you look, but like once anything, you actually a chip yeah but once, a chip a chip? but once you get into it and like i said i was skeptical i went and i used it and the one thing i can say from the other brand that um i don't see as much as with ours is with their chip you get a lot of channeling and i always mm. hate i always hated that I always hated mm. that term because I didn't think it was real. But mm. truth, I know exactly what you mean. But the truth though. of the matter is, you start to get that funneling towards like your water, and you see it. And that's probably even relative to that 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 cheaper pit that's in yep. there that pulls away, yep. like we're yep. saying. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So you you pour, and all of a sudden everything funnels towards the center. Right. You know what I mean? Sure. As opposed to getting, and even, you'll sit there and you'll go and and now now granted, I'm hand watering because I'm at home. Sure. You know, but it's definitely something where when you do it and you observe, you start to see, hey. Um, you know, this is this is a quality I don't think I like because ultimately when you get that funneling, right. that means all the water is going to go down to, towards the center of the pot. It's not going to go towards the edge of the which pot. Which is where you need it which to be where, where root hairs yeah, are at and we exa actually get up Exactly. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. so honestly, that's the biggest difference I've seen and that's from me actually using it. You know, and, and honestly, that's from me skeptically using it because I know how I felt about the other product. Right. Well, you know? and I think, you know, a healthy amount of skepticism, not being a skeptic, but a healthy amount of skepticism in this in this industry is, is really yeah. actually important. But if that being that but being go prove said, it for yourself. Go but that being yourself. said as well, you know, having used the other product, I knew what I was looking for. Like I knew I was like, oh well, this other stuff funnels. Did this? Yeah, and then so when I see, and then when it. I see it in this product, and I don't see that, I'm like, oh okay, okay, that's that's I see. And again, for me, the big one when I'm looking at the quality is the amount of fiber in there. I'm, you know, let, let's. I'm a service area guy. Yeah, Absolutely. well, and the pith is the part we want, even if it's in a chunk form. Sure. You know, if they've taken the time to get the fiber out, but they still have a small enough chip. Mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. really that's really what you're looking for and again that's going to come you know that's going to come down to the quality of the cocoa you're using i'm or the coconut you're using because i'm sure and maturity it, well and at this point a lot of the cocos that they're I mean, starting think about to it, use, if you're taking a six month coconut versus an even a 12 month even an eight month yep. right like you, you you start stacking it up over time and you're like whoa that's actually a huge difference yep. so you understand really what that commitment to quality by giving it that extra time really is and really at Cyatetics, they do offer a perfect blend of mature and premium chips like we were saying tailored to meet your specific crop needs so that's actually what's cool They're, they do do some custom stuff that's out there they really take pride in being the leader and worldwide manufacturer of premium very specifically, premium matured cocoa core, and, and, and that's not, really their deal. I was premium say, matured cocoa core. That's well, their biggest thing. And the thing. big thing we never even mentioned this, but as oh. far as I remember, now it's tough because we always talk about organics and stuff. But isn't it organic? Am I right? I don't know why it wouldn't be organic because again, there's no chemical buffering. There's no additional nutrients that are put on it. It's naturally composted. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and call it organic. I th I, uh, well, I think it. I think it's actually labeled as organic in India. You know what I mean? So again, we'll it. it's one of those things. <laughs> we'll take it. Well, it's one of those things where, as we always talk about, you know, getting things that stamp costs a lot of money. You know, so it's just mm -hmm. in America to get an organic stamp. 
extra hundred thousand dollars. Right. Doesn't mean, you know. Yeah. Well, and, and at the end of the day, what does it even really mean? How much does it mean these days? You know what I mean? True that. Again, I think you're paying to play yeah, on we, that one. We've had that discussion as far as you go to organic crops and stuff like that. They can be treated with heavy duty pesticides. Yeah. Once, oh, you know, whoa, once in their what life. What do we so. got now? What do we got now? <laughs> so, uh, you know, uh, just signing off from our cocoa portion. Want to give you guys a little bit, but also want to bring out and show you. This is something we've been working really hard to bring to our our followers, to bring to our growers and our partners. You know, again, we literally uh, had had. Some some drug dealers across the world that were going and verifying all the processing and stuff. And Gabe, having used you know a variety of different products, and obviously using things commercial. Dude, I've used a lot know. of different cocoa over and the so, years. And so, you know, as have I, and I'm an avid cocoa guy. So, you heard it first here, Cytetics Cocoa. Come and get it. Let's talk real quick. Genetics. Strain talk. Strain talk. Bing. Yeah. Okay. And again, what we're gonna do here, and this is gonna be something that's that's continuing to happen in our in our uh, our illustrious producer grambo will be helping with this but photos will be up on the jug page go check out the jug dealers ig page give it a follow that's where we're gonna uh, end up actually posting these pics yeah. i've got some great pictures up of pure michigan been super stoked on it so recently. i mean let's just let's, let's cut to the rip does the Mendo, what is it, Mendo breath? Does, Mendo the, breath. does the Mendo breath straighten out the Oreos? Without a doubt. And that's my biggest. What's everybody, so I mean, you know, you know for those of you who don't know, the biggest problem with Oreos, looks great, big bulker, no terps. No terps. And even, you know, our It's kind of like the fellow, white 2.0, you right, know? Right. It is. It is. <laughs> it totally is. And, that's, and, and I found out about, out about it very, very quickly. And, and actually, our fellow jug dealer, Brandon, said something the other day. He's like, oh, an Oreo is crossed. I was like, no, bro. Not this one. I'll be honest. I actually, because I didn't know what the genetics of Pure Michigan yep, were, yep. and I actually thought that it had some GMO in it. Okay. It's got that, it's got that funk, that. And so, but the structure is on point. <laughs> that disgusting, old only man's could be breath. delicious if it was cannabis That's kind of breath. smell. That's the breath. That's the breath. Altosis breath. It's pretty nasty, but it's also got a creaminess on the back end. It's got some lev uh, levels on the flavoring. It's a very rigorous and rigid plant. I mean, this does is it have that vigor of the Oreos? It, it does, and you could literally you don't even have, the you, Oreos is a monster as you far would as you would not have to you wouldn't have to stake it. You would not have to trellis it if you didn't want to. I mean, I've got everything else, and it had some big old buds on it and didn't fall over. Really a beautiful plant. Reason it's called Pure Michigan, because it is from two of the elite breeders that are out of the great state of Michigan. Shout out to the Mitten. And it is Thug Pug and Third Coast were actually partnered nice, up on that nice, one. Nice, nice. So again, and I'm sure you kind of already picked up on that, but it's Mendo Breath Crossed Oreos. I think we already said that. It gets the gas from the breath, um, thankfully. Takes the structure, takes the prettiness, takes that oil content out of the Oreos, and I really think it's a beautiful blend. Go up on IG, check it out. Um, let me know what you guys think, and we will have, and we'll mention this in a second. But we, you know, send us your harvest picks, send us the stuff you got out there. Yeah, we're going to be featuring we're people. Be, yeah, this is going to be an ongoing section that that, that we've got. That uh, you know, as long as we've got some dank picks to post, we'll post them and we'll shout you guys out. So shoot us some fun stuff there if you don't mind. Do you want to go to our recommended reading? Because yeah, uh, well, do you want to talk any about your East Coast trip? I know you, I and I, I make fun. Of, again, Gabe was just. Uh, I mean, look, I, I, you know, like I half finally, the time on these I, w I went back and visited Virginia. You know, it's interesting back there because um, that market is still a lot of home growers. You know, there. Right. You know, that's the that's really the gateway to the South right there. And as we always talk about, you know, the South has really been. You know, I'll be honest with you. Um, there's a lot of Southern pride down there and they're kind of just sitting back and watching what the rest of the country does, but nobody's too quick to pull the trigger. And I think that's, you know, part of Southern pride is like a self-reliance is yep. that, that, yep. that kind of yep. homesteading mindset is that independent mindset. And I mean, I know when you and I were there, we were laughing our asses off because we're like, dude, most of these people don't even smoke. There's like, Hell yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, people, yeah, people are literally, it's still that, you know, yeah, so it's funny. I, I went into some of the stores and I'm like, how are things? They're like, Oh, you know, we slowed down a little bit now that harvest has come. Right. You know, and, and like, you know, we're still trying to remind people that they can grow inside. You know, because right. it's, it's like, a, a, you know, and again, like, they're like, why? I just grow weed I, so that when my uncle comes over, he's got some weed to smoke. You know? <laughs> God <laughs> bless like, him. I don't yeah. even, you know, I don't even I, smoke the stuff. Yeah, they're like, I don't you know? smoke dope. And, How many and, people well, told and us not, that? And not for nothing, um, you know, Maryland just legalized this summer 
So anybody up there in Nova, you know, Northern Virginia, anywhere north of Richmond, they can always just drive up to Maryland and grab legal. Them rich now. boys north of Richmond, I heard about them. You know, they got the good <laughs> stuff too. So, you know, I mean, it's 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 definitely um, it's definitely interesting to see. One of the great things we're seeing as far as some of the East Coast spots I've been hitting up north is we're finally starting to get some data back from the UVs. Yes, we are. And uh, we put I a lot know, of work out there. I'm not sure if I put it out on one of the, the last episodes, but um, we saw a five-point jump in cannabinoids on Bubba Diagonal out of a grow that I used to operate. So they went from 20, I think it was a 20.5%, 20.8% THC, to to twenty five point five percent THC. You've actually got it right there. Why don't you just why don't you just grab that sucker? That's a UV unit right yeah, there sitting is, next to you. That's that's right I don't right know there. if Granville's got enough control to get that over there, but let's take a look at that beauty. I mean, let's for for, every, for anybody who hasn't seen it, you know, this is basically, you know, it looks for anybody who wouldn't know, they would go, oh, that's a three fifteen. Negative, you know? negative. Uh, so negative because we we're looking at you know, it's double, a, you double, double ended, ended yep. double ended fixture, but then on top of it. It's only 150 watts. Yeah. You know, so. And it covers can, 100 square feet. You can pull six in your room. So there are six of these for one. You're basically pull down 1,000 watt. And you can put slap six of these up. Yeah, and it's yeah, the, yeah. And it's the same amount of power usage. I can tell you from using it in my garden, um, the amount of benefits that you see out of it are amazing. Um, you're going to see more vigor in your plants. Yeah, it's the things you would expect, right? Yeah, because yeah. it's that same stuff that people talk about, sun-grown and everything else, which I believe in. I believe in certain terpenes from the sun. Yep. I believe in a certain vigor from the sun. I believe in a certain strength of the plant from the sun. Yep. And and this is doing what you would think it does. And I'm not, I'm going to, you know, I know we've talked about some of the systemic stuff, and I don't waste a whole lot of time. But to go see it, like, time, to be able to go into these shops. technology that we've And got. that's one of the reasons I've been cruising around the East Coast is because I'm constantly dropping in on these places every two months. Hey, how are your results? What did you see? Damn, what did you really like? What didn't that, you like? Things like that. I mean, right? I, look, I can tell you the room that those guys have this hung up in. You know, this is a this is a hundred and fifty thousand square foot facility. Sure, this um, is this is a big boy. This stuff. this, is big this boy room stuff. was one of their worst performing rooms in the building, and they swapped out the HPSs, our HPSs, and the UVs, and it is right now one of the best performing rooms in the building you heard it right here folks you know, and again so. as this information comes out and really comes out and where we can make it available we will but what i'll say to you is it's doing all the stuff that you would think it would do that would think you do all right moving on and somewhat predictably because i can't think we kind of already said we we're gonna you know this. suggested <laughs> reading uh so suggested reading and and again i am I promise you this, and I mentioned it again. We're going to get some signed copies. We're going to get some stuff coming out. We'll Hopefully, we're going to. I'd like to get them. You know, even if we can't get them in here, if we can just get them on the show. At some point, we're going to start but doing mobile interviews. Don't 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 you worry, folks. It's it, uh, things like that are in the works. Um, teaming, teaming with, with nutrients, nutrients. Uh, part two of the trilogy, and really the qual. What do you even call a four part? What the hell is a four part called, Grambo? Uh, the the qu quadrilogy. Quadrilogy. Okay, yes. I was just saying. What a I, great word. Yeah. Go, <laughs> what is it? Oh my god, that just reminds me of that that fish show. Where it's like what? Uh, <laughs> 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 oh, I threw myself off there, folks. Uh, okay, most gardeners realize that plants need to be fed, but know little to nothing about the nature of the nutrients involved or how they get into plants. And I know this is something that we really pride ourselves on educating. And there's a lot more. Our best good educated. technical. There's so much. To this, know. this is so. This is one of the places that we obviously refer to and regurgitate information from there's there's no doubt about that you know teaming with nutrients explains how nutrients move into plants what both macro and micronutrients do once inside the plant it shows organic gardeners how to provide these essentials to fully explain how plants eat Lowenfels is uses his unique ability to make science accessible with lessons in biology chemistry and, and, it's, and read, botany. It's, it's readable, readable it's man. readable i mean it's that's very the thing. readable yeah, it's not it's not completely over your head. No, no, no. He like I said, he's he's a wonderful speaker. If you ever get a chance, go out and check yeah, him out. Good. We saw you him know, in he, Baltimore. He's yeah, amazing. And he does, you know, he regularly comes out. I'm sure he'll be out in, you know, uh well, was he in Vegas? <laughs> Bring the camera. Yeah, we will be. Okay. 
ski report, bro. I was driving down today and I saw some clouds and I got a little giddy. I know we <laughs> talked about this last time. We're still right in the middle of places opening up. It's all pretty much man made out there. We're getting little kisses. Yeah, of snow, getting little kisses, but, but it's, nothing. I think we might. I think it might be a uh, you know hopefully December. Push, they're saying but. El Nino. I mean, I'll tell you down south, and that's where I got hopes for because a good El Nino winter, you typically will see that jet stream settle down into the four corners. And if you're really looking at the jet stream and you see that little that little swoop down in the four corners. Corners, Wolf Creek, baby. Yep, yep. So we'll see. And, and honestly, places like Flagstaff and really anywhere in the Southwest can get uncharacteristically high amounts of snow in an El Nino winter. Grambo, yes, you had a question. Graham, be easy. Uh, what was my question? Your sulfur question. Even yes. though, oh. even though, even though it's not related oh. to our nutrient line, I still want to answer this question yeah. because. I respect people's questions. And, of course, we do have, uh, which we've already talked about, our cytetics, um, uh, pesticides as well. So we do have things yep. that can um, get the same effects that they're looking for. But just talking a little bit about sulfur, and this is, again, we like listener interaction. We really want to concentrate on listener yeah. interaction. So anything you guys got, put it out to our boy Graham Beasy here. And, uh, all right, this our first a, listener This question. was a big one. This was the our first, not only listener question, but listener tip. This was Whoa. a super chat tip. Now that we are... Uh, we're in the YouTube partnership program, guys. So we can hello, actually, uh, hello. We can actually do a little bit of stuff here. And, it, we, uh, it does make it to where we can do some more fun stuff. So, so we thank got, you, uh, YouTube. So thank you from Drew Beats. We see you out there, Drew Beats. It did not get missed. And he had a question for you guys saying, please explain the pros and cons of spraying sulfur in veg and flour. I hadn't heard of people Well, first off, yeah, I, let's, okay. Do you want to, do you want to start on this I end and work flour, forward or do you want to work backwards? You know, flour, I really, so... Flour you can only spray until you see butt set. Absolutely, you know, and and once you and see you can't do it after any type of oil spray. Yeah, as well. one, once you see bud set, you can back off. You know, sulfur has always been known to enhance aroma, enhance flavor, it, it, and it stuff is, like that. It is an essential part of aromatic rings. I just had yep. somebody ask me yep. a question the other day. I very much believe in sulfur, but not it, from a uh, as far as fuller sulfur goes. To me, that's all about fungal suppression. Yeah, and it's well, or or people use it for russets. Okay, you know, no, um, no, good point. Uh, um, you're, you're right. But, uh, but uh, wetted it, sulfur. It, it um, is. Yeah, it you're is, right. It wetted is. Sulfur, yeah. It is kind of messy, you know. So and oh, and not you. and not for nothing, it's going to leave a smell. So like, I and think really, that's I don't one of the biggest it for for. I, I don't suggest it outside of greenhouses personally, just because you can actually. Yeah, I'm not saying it's not yeah, doable. It's yeah, just not. Yeah, the, it's not. Yeah. I'm and not and again, another problem you're going to run into is. Um, if you spray oils, you know, you're going to yeah. want to make sure that those oils are rinsed off. Same thing in the reverse. If you have the sulfur on the plant, you're going to want to make sure. Oils. The, yeah, you're going to want to make sure the sulfur's rinsed off and rinsed off well. So, but I as mean, far as trying to get those advantages, as far as the aromatic aspect of it, spraying I mean, dude, in flour, yeah. I, it's going to make your shit terpy, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. well, down. yeah, but but taking it, up taking it properly, as opposed to spraying it on there, and obviously, like you said, nothing until after bud set. Okay, we are uh, we just got a couple more supporter shout outs actually, and this one, as we talked about, this wonderful cocoa being suitable for mushrooms it yeah. really was a wonderful lead into this um we wanted to shout out tanasi gardens v2 tanasi gardens v2 yeah. and sacred three mushrooms and their affiliate fruity spores and in fact we got our first discount code oh yeah nice yeah so again you know we're here we're independent we don't rely on other people we're powered by five eight however we do have a bunch of cool people out there and we are willing to pass on these cool connections and if you go to uh this month and i'm not exactly sure when this is coming actually you know what it's not just this month i think probably forever yeah, yeah. you can get a discount code 10 percent off of both Sacred Three Mushrooms and their their Fable Kits. I can tell you right now, I personally use the Fable Kits. They are so easy. They have wonderful videos up. You just took down the other day, right? Yeah, you yeah, little, I did. Uh, personal I, Jerry. I, 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 Man, Got me some mushies. Um, and again, thank you very much to to Tenasi for helping me out on that. It's really been a fun, 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 fun journey. And uh, Fruity Spores, they've got all the genetics available. You can also, it's Jug Dealers Podcast, JDP10 on either website. It'll nice. save you 10%. Our first discount. We will, JDP10. JDP10. We will post that uh, uh, up for you guys. And I will say to the end of the month, in honor of vets, because Tenasi is a veteran, um, he's giving a free syringe of Casper in every fable kit sold and those fable kits come with everything to the to the gloves you need to a little thing of iso i mean he makes it keep it clean stupid folks stupid easy guys i'm telling you right now 
If you've been interested in it, and I was for the longest time, Sacred Three Mushrooms makes it as easy as you could have it. I'm going to shout out the homie Lance. Do it. Let Do me it. Just, Our boy you know, Lance. He made us these. Made us these. Some shirts right here. Yeah, yeah. But to, to pay no attention to, to the to the hair there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I'm wearing the same shirt. <laughs> but Lance, you know, I mean, you want to talk? Supporter. You want you want to talk about supporters love us? Homie went out and made us shirts, like made us new Millennium shirts. So shout out to Lance. It, Groovy grows. Uh, yeah. Well, it in for the love of the plant for as well. For the love right? of the plant. Yeah. yeah. Yep, yep. Uh, the number four. Yep. The love number four. And love we'll, we'll the we'll plant. Dude, Lance. Well. Lance yep. is super hardcore, homie, and Thank he's you, my always Thank growing you. that fire. And not to mention, he's always testing that Canarado gear, which is just crazy fire, dude. So good. So good. Find him. Hit him up, folks. Hit him up for the love of the plant. Okay, now down to shop shout-outs. Want to throw one out to uh, Gabe's Shore, Neck of the Woods. Shore Grow Hydro. Shore Grow Hydro. The homies in Jersey. We, yeah. love, we love those And we dudes, said it on their podcast, the, too. Shout-out to support. Dougie and all there. Yep, thank you guys for your support. Also in your territory, good old East Coast Hydro. East Coast Hydro. Fall Shane, River, Shane's the man, dude. Shane is the homie. And out in Fall River, you know, that eastern side of Massachusetts, they got it locked down. Yep, yep. And uh, last but certainly not least in Southern California, and actually, is it Hemet, California? Hemet, California. Yeah, yep, kind yep, of interior yep. Southern California, but shout out to Hydro Zen. Go see Chris over there. He's got it locked down. He's been there for a long time. Thank you for your support. Oh, um, yeah. I know there's not a lot of options right there, so congratulations to you to keep it hold, <laughs> holding it down and, and, and keeping rocking. So go uh, go see uh, see some of our shops out there. And if you've got any questions, we can point you in the right direction. Oh, yeah. Last but not least, it's giveaway time. And actually, Grambo, uh, why don't you talk about just real quick who we had win from last week yeah. or – weeks ago or whenever that happened yeah a couple weeks ago we talked about uh doing a 5-8 if you followed 5-8 and you followed the jug dealers on instagram we're gonna do a little silicium and a clonex giveaway and we those numbers are in so uh congratulations to trippy grows you know who you are trippy i know trippy grows. oh yeah trippy uh, grows killer yeah. Sativa. speaking of that wow it all just comes together sometimes yeah we got killer sativa we got jeff hay j-e-f-h-a-y jeff hay we got tark i know tark he's a good buddy yep, out there absolutely uh, yep. Zachary Slackery and Papa Stoned 420. Excellent. So, Grambo's got you. He'll get with you. He'll get stuff all on the way for you. Real quick, we will do a giveaway this week as well. We're going to keep throwing out some Clonex packs and everything yep. that goes out. It is almost winter, and since Gabe and I are so excited about skiing, even though it's not happening quite yet, we're going to do a winter giveaway. We're going to try, gateway and, try and, and step it up. The one and only gateway job. <laughs> right. All right. We'll winter do frost. five on that a, a, as well. Grambo will pick those winners go follow the pages do well this, the things uh, that we say what do you this, want to do grambo this week uh since we're talking uh coco why don't you guys go follow the uh set of cyatetics page over there there we go uh, there we, we go we don't have a lot of love over cyatetics and they need it it's a quality product so go follow uh if you follow at jug dealers and you follow at uh cyatetics five of you maybe even six uh, Jaron told me to pick five. I pick six. Hey, we're cause... generous around yeah. here. Let's we're generous yeah. around here. We're generous around here. See ya. Follow and, us, uh, follow Cytetics and Jug Dealers, and we'll give away five of what? Uh, we're going to give away five quarts of Winter Frost oh. with, with some Clonex gel. So we're doing both ends of things. Oh, yes. So you can see the stuff right up front here. Uh, this listing giveaway we did last time, we'll keep giving stuff away. If you do see our fellow jug dealer, Brandon, he's a Brandon 58 we'll pop him up there. If you see him out there on the road, folks, why don't you go and bother him? He's out there in Michigan running around. Whether you're a shop, whether you're a grow, whether you're just somebody out there that wants to uh, really get put on the path of, of high quality cannabis production, hit our boy Brandon up. He will take care of you. And uh, I guarantee he's got some stuff uh, stuff to give away as well brandon at five eight right or uh, brandon five eight yep. on instagram yep uh, thanks yep. so much Absolutely. for watching y'all we Thank love you, you and just a shout out to all you who have been listening and watching our podcast we see you we definitely we see, see you, your comments you. we definitely appreciate you guys hey final thing i did screw up on the foss episode and i said that it only took 20 years it takes 20 million <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I was going to correct you in the moment. I, 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 I caught, I ca I, I'm actually at the point where I'm watching it myself in, and I in, caught it. Yeah, okay. So, obviously, in the interest of transparency and honesty, <laughs> we're going to finish the show with Gabe's last scrub, which is totally fine. Hey, till next time from the Jug Den. Thank you, everybody. We appreciate you. Peace we see and love. Thank you. Bye bye.